Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory radio on this Ford F-150. Now, in this video, we're gonna show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the parts that we're gonna need for the install, including the radio, dash kit, wiring harness. We'll come back here and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. So before we jump into things, a couple of things to note. Our F-150 doesn't have steering wheel volume controls, so we don't have to worry about retaining those. If you do have those, we will talk about that on the bench and link those various parts in the description. We also don't have the factory amplifier or the sub underneath the rear seat, so we don't have to worry about retaining that. But again, if you do, we'll talk about that more at the bench. Now to get this bezel out of the way so we can get the radio out, um, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's just held in with clips. We have a little panel tool here. And what we're going to do is work this bezel on free. All right. So quite a few clips up and around the bezel. And we got to disconnect a little harness here at the top. Now our airbag light is located here in the dash bezel. Let's not turn on the car while it's disconnected or it can trip the airbag light on the dash. So we're gonna lay this down here up and out of the way. We don't have to disconnect it any further. Next thing we need to do is remove the four seven millimeter or nine thirty second screws up and around the radio. Four screws removed, go ahead and give the radio a tug and disconnect the harnesses back behind the radio. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are done with our factory radio. At this point of time, let's head to the bench, show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Okay, so here at the bench, now the parts that we're going with our install, first and foremost is the radio that was chosen to be placed in this truck. It's the Planet Audio P9900CPA, features both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, now, to accommodate that in the factory location, we need a couple of accessory parts here. First and foremost is the dash kit that we need. It's the Metra 95-5812 for select Ford Lincoln vehicles. Um, this accommodates a double den, comes with everything that you need. Now, for the wiring size, again, there's two different harnesses depending on your year vehicle. Now, the harness that you may need for your vehicle um, either will be a single harness like this or one with the secondary, depending if you have the factory amplified sound system or not. We don't have the factory amplifier, so we just need the 70-5520, but if you do have an amplifier, you'll need the secondary harness, which we'll link that down in the description. Additionally, if you have steering wheel volume controls, there is a plug and play harness from Crux that we can also link in the description, or you can add a universal steering wheel control module, which we can also link in the description as well. Finally, with our vehicle, we need a, an antenna adapter. This is the Metro 40-CR10. So that's the parts that we need for the install. What we're gonna start with is our wiring. We're gonna grab our wiring harness adapter, the one that came with our new radio. Essentially here, we're gonna strip both ends, Today we're gonna to be soldering and we're gonna match color for color. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what we've done here is we've stripped both ends. Now we're gonna be matching pretty much color for color here um, and we're gonna be soldering our connections. Now, if you don't know how to solder, don't have the means to do so, you can use crimp caps or buck connectors. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as they're not designed for this application. So we've loaded our wire up with some heat shrink. We're gonna solder today, and then once those connections cool, we'll move our heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with a heat gun. So let's go ahead and get these soldered up. All right, so we finished matching color for color here. Um, really, in this case, it was color for color. The only color that we did extra is we grounded our parking brake wire, which is our light green. You can with these radios. Uh, you won't be able to just ground your parking brake with Pioneers and Alpines will need a bypass, but that's it. Um, we also added an extra remote turn-on wire just for an amplifier down the road. 
and uh, we didn't use steering wheel controls because we don't have them so we don't need to connect that input to anything and our camera powers you don't we're not adding a backup camera in this case at this time we're going to move our heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with a heat gun okay so everything is all soldered and heat shrunk we also wrapped it in tessa tape so it's nice and uh, protected there in the dash this unplugs in the vehicle this unplugs in the radio uh, we have our camera powers hanging off if applicable we got our steering wheel control not needed uh, we also left our backup camera trigger wire purple white off in case we had one down the road now we also added that remote turn on wire in case an external amplifier is added down the road and that's there and um, terminated as well so with our harness done and out of the way let's now go ahead and get our dash kit on our radio okay so we got our dash kit on super simple dash kit essentially the brackets clip into the front bezel of the dash kit and then you put the radio within the dash kit and put in the screws where they fit so that's it it's nice and straight nice and flush that's basically ready to go now the dash kit does come with some spacers so if it sits too far back in the dash it doesn't sit flush within the dash panel they give you these spacers which you can attach back behind which bring the radio bezel on out just a hair. Also, with this new setup, your screws may not reach, and so they supply new screws that you'll use to um, mount your radio in the bezel. Now, what we also did, putting this off to the side, is we grabbed our dash bezel out of the way, and we actually went ahead and cut a hole here and flush mounted these dual USB flush mount adapters. Um, we're gonna put a little glue there so it doesn't come loose over the years. But essentially here, that's a nice, clean, and easy looking finish to allow us to access Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a charge all built right into the faceplate, which is pretty cool. Um, so we got that all in and flush mounted. We can add one of these down in the description in case you want to pick one up yourself. So with this all done and out of the way, let's head to the car to start getting everything reinstalled. It is time to start getting everything reinstalled. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and connect our radio here plugs right into that harness just like that now our antenna adapter we've already plugged that on in that plugs in there that also goes to the back of the radio just like so have these tabs here on the back we're gonna have to break them off because they actually don't apply to this vehicle we do need our little spacers let's go ahead and put those on in They just press into the holes, super simple. Just like that. So your screws now may not reach if you use those spacers, so you'll use the supplied four screws with the cash kit. Now before we go ahead and snap everything back in, let's go ahead and give it a shot, make sure everything's working properly. Okay, everything seems to be working great. Now at this point in time, let's go ahead and snap this bezel back into place. And there we are, all done. That's about it for this video. Now, if you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching. We'll link all the parts that we use down in the description. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.